Hello everyone, I'm German Uncle. I'm the programmer of a new game called Train Supported. I want to just quickly show you, introduce you to the game and show you how to get started. First of all, I'm going to render a new map. I'll make it 6 by 8 tiles wide and high. And there we go, that's our first map. Trainsported is set in the near future, and the trains on this map are no longer controlled by humans. Instead, they're controlled by artificial intelligence. As a player, it's your job to program that artificial intelligence. I've loaded a first AI in here, um, which I'm going to program right now. But it doesn't actually do anything so far. We're going to change that in a second. But before that, let me tell you about the map. The map is tile based. As you can see, maybe when you zoom in, here you can see the coordinates of every tile. There's houses on the map, and around these houses, there's little blue dots, which are passengers. They always spawn around houses, and they always want to go to another house. If you hold down the spacebar, you can see where each passenger wants to go. So, let's start by creating our first train. To do that, you need to know that the game has a folder on your computer called AI. It might be in a different place depending on your operating system. You can just play the first tutorial to find out where it is on your computer. I am going to load the awesome AI file. You can load that in any text editor you want to. Um, and in here we're going to write our code for the, for the awesome AI, which is already loaded here. First thing we're going to do is write a function ai.init. This function is called whenever the map is started. So it's the first thing the program executes. In here, we're going to buy our first train. Now, to this function, we have to pass two arguments, and we have to tell it where we want to place the train. To do that, um, go back to the game, press M, and here you can see the coordinates, as I showed you before, and we're going to just place it up here on the tile 1-1. One, one. Once that is done, you save the file and reload the map, and if everything went right, you got your first train. Now this train just keeps on going and doesn't actually pick up any passengers yet because we haven't told it to do so. Also, we haven't actually told it where to go, so it just keeps on moving in a predefined direction until you tell it to go somewhere else. It does that because later on you, you can load more than one AI on the same map and it has to keep going because otherwise trains would block each other. Next thing we're going to do is pick up a passenger. There's another function we need to code for that and that one is called ai.foundpassengers. This function receives two parameters. The first one is the train which is found passengers and the second one is the directions. The way this works is every time the train reaches a tile that has passen passengers on it, this function is loaded and it's given as arguments the train which has arrived at, n at the new tile and, oh sorry, the passengers which are standing on that tile. Passengers is a list of passengers and this function needs to return a passenger um, in order to pick that passenger up. Um, for now we're just going to return the first passenger in the list. You, d you can do that by using square brackets and a 1 after the passengers, the, the name of the list. Again, save that and if we did everything right and reload then it's going to pick up the first passenger it finds, which should be down here. There we go, it's stopping and picking up the passenger. Perfect. Next thing we want to do is drop the passenger off. Again, a, a new function. 
This one is called AI.FoundDestination. If a train has a passenger, then this function is always called when the train arrives at the, t at the tile where the passenger wants to go. This one gets just one argument, and all we have to do in here is drop the passenger. Again, save and reload and if we're lucky we get to see it pick up a passenger and bring it to its destination now the problem here is this train might not actually arrive at the passenger's de destination because we haven't actually told it to go anywhere yet oh, never mind, we might be lucky yes, we are lucky and there we go it dropped off one passenger and picked up the next one I sped up the game a little to show how it's working. I don't know if it's gonna actually arrive there. Oh, we are lucky. All right. Now the problem is, as you can see, the train is locked in this area on the right here. That's because of the default behavior. The default behavior is to always go north if it can, or south if it can, or then later on it tries east or west, and west is the last direction it tries, so on this tile it'll always go east. We can change that, and I'm going to show you with the last function we're going to write today, which is choose direction. This is probably the most important function and the largest one you're going to be writing. This one gets um, two arguments again. The train, which arrived at a junction, and the directions it can go in. This, uh, this function is only called when a train arrives at any junction on the map. Dears is a list of directions it can go in. It's filled with values like this and um, to choose a random one of those we're gonna just put it into a different Lua table. If you don't know what Lua tables are just play the uh, tutorials and they'll, it'll teach you. So we're gonna check if the direction north is available and if so, we're going to put that in, hang on, that was just an example to show you, I'm going to comment that out, um, and if the direction is available, we'll put it in the table. We're going to do this for all four directions. four directions, which is west, east, south and north. And now at the end all we have to do is return a random one of these directions. And that's going to be the, the direction the train will go in. So again, index the table like this, and now we're going to put a random value in there, and going to choose a random one of a, a random value contained in the table. Again, if this went a little fast, just do the tutorials and you'll be fine. I'm saving it, and now instead of always going to the west side, I mean east side, sorry, it'll randomly choose directions. And this way it's going to slowly bring the passengers to their destinations.
once you've done all that and beaten all of the t all of the four tutorials, there's going to be challenge maps later on, and there's also the compete mode where you can let AIs compete against each other on a random map. Once that's done as well, uh, the last step is going to be up to upload your AI and let it compete in live online matches. To do that, go to the Transporter website, and on there you can see um, info about the upcoming matches, the current matches, and the matches that have already passed. You'll also um, get top scores here, and information about your own AIs that you've uploaded once you log in. But there's more than that. The best part is you can actually watch the live matches if you connect to a server. We wrote a very basic AI today. There was no pathfinding involved. There was no complex decision making involved. I'll leave all of that up to you.